Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to talk to you about how you can help our native turtle species. We're heading into peak turtle nesting season and you're going to see them along the roads and um, I want to start by explaining why turtles need our help. Um, they are among the most threatened groups of uh, vertebrate species of animals on earth even more so than some of our birds, mammals, fish, and amphibians. And uh, they have outlived the dinosaurs and have roamed the earth for over 200 million years, but they're struggling to survive now um, worldwide due to habitat destruction, over-exploitation and collection for uh, the pet trade and food, um, disease and climate change. With the loss of these often understudied species, um, we will lose critical ecological roles that they play in maintaining healthy food webs, dispersing seeds, and creating um, the habitats necessary for other species, in particular uh, burrowing um, turtle species. Um, and they play these roles in wetlands, in deserts, in freshwater and marine ecosystems. In Michigan um, and in the Midwest in general, our uh, freshwater aquatic turtles suffer um, adverse impacts from habitat loss uh, and fragmentation. Uh, the draining of wetlands, new roads being built between their overwintering and nesting habitats as examples, um, contaminated runoff into watersheds, predators like raccoons, foxes, skunks, um, things like fish and um, wading birds uh, and other animals will prey upon eggs and nestlings as well. Uh, collection for the pet trade and uh, in particular vehicle mortality on the roads and in uh, utility rights of way. Those are, those are critical issues. Um, as I said, most of our turtles are freshwater aquatic. Uh, we have one terrestrial species, the Eastern box turtle as well. Same goes for their habitats. And these turtle species have a very long lifespan but it takes them a long time to reach sexual maturity, something on the order of, of 10 to 20 years, depending on the species. Um, they can live a long time, 30 to 70 plus years in the wild, but um, very few hatchlings actually survive to adulthood. Nest predation is very high, especially with exploding raccoon populations and um, the loss of critical nesting habitat. So what can we do to help our native turtle species? I have lots of ideas and I hope they help you um, try to make a difference. So where you see turtles um, crossing signs along the road or where you have seen turtles crossing before or you know there's good habitat, slow down. Um, drive more slowly, watch for dark objects on the road surface and edges, and make sure um, you stop if it's safe, throw on those blinkers, and check for um, traffic before you get out of your vehicle, and help move the turtle across the road or off of the road in the original direction it was traveling. For a demonstration of how to appropriately pick up a turtle, see Mondays with Martha number two and number seven, where I talk about Blanding's turtle and wood turtles. Um, uh, these two species are being considered currently for listing um, federally under the Endangered Species Act and are rare, um, but can be found in the Midland, Michigan area and lots of other places within the state and in the Midwest. Um, May and June are prime uh, nesting season, and so we need to help the ladies get where they need to go as they head across the roads looking for um, drier upland uh, nesting sites with loose uh, soil that's easy to dig in. Um, 
Remember, as uh, you look for things crossing the roads, they may not be moving, but they may still be okay. Um, and that size can be a wide range. The little um, hatchlings and very young turtles can be maybe the size of a quarter or a 50 cent piece. Um, the um, adults can be, you know, much larger for talking um, a mature snapping turtle or uh, map turtle. So um, you can have a pair of gloves um, or hand sanitizer handy when you do move the turtles. Um, their claws are sharp and so um, you want to pick them up from the sides and if you want to wear gloves that can help or uh, make sure you use hand sanitizer afterwards and wash your hands as soon as possible. They do carry salmonella and um, you want to do that before um, eating or going about other business. Um, and then you want to not handle them um, very much, so as little as possible just to get them safely off the road and where they were headed, um, just to try to minimize stressing the animal. They may uh, go to the bathroom when you pick them up. Um, as a defense mechanism. So when you do pick them up, pull them out away from your feet and get them where they need to go. Snapping turtles are kind of a different story. Um, they are very fast. They have very long necks, very strong jaws. They can split open a finger in a heartbeat and um, very long, sharp claws. So with this particular species, um, I recommend like maybe having a bucket or a scoop shovel handy um, to help get them across the road. Um, you can try to shepherd them rather than pick them up, but it is very hard to pick them up without getting clawed and or bitten. So, and they are pretty ornery and if you get too close, um, they will charge. You can try to herd them, but they're very likely to turn around and face off with you. So um, best to just sort of protect them and try to, you know, have them get across on their own without getting hit um, or moving them, like I said, with a shovel or something like that. But you never want to pick a turtle up by the tail, um, by a leg. That's, that's um, bad for their skeleton. That's painful to them. So um, you don't want to do that, and sometimes just leaving the snapping turtles alone um, is the safest thing uh, to do in that instance. So um, besides helping them get across our um, dangerous road systems, you can also report your sightings. So in Michigan, we have the Michigan Herp Atlas is one way that you can report for the rare turtle species like spotted turtle, Blanding's turtle, wood turtle, um, reporting to Michigan Natural Features Inventory um, is a good, good place so that it gets into the rare species database eventually. Um, if those species become federally listed, then reporting to Fish and Wildlife Service um, would be appropriate. You can also report, I looked under the Michigan DNR eyes in the field, and they do have a turtle reporting that occurs now through iNaturalist. So there are three options um, to let the regulators and conservation managers know um, what you found and help them understand popula population status, um, kind of home ranges and seasonal behaviors of these species. I also encourage you to know your state laws and report violations. So for example, in Michigan, we have a fisheries order, uh, 224.21, um, and that protects many of our turtle and other um, reptile and amphibian species from collection. Um, and so if you see somebody violating that, shooting at turtles, purposely running them over, or collecting them for pet trade, that sort of thing. You can report that to your local DNR office, but this fisheries order um, under the DNR um, makes it illegal to collect, kill, trap, um, and possess many of our 
um, native turtle species. So I'll provide a link to that in the notes for the video. Um, you can also volunteer in local research programs and projects um, and help locate and collect data um, on these lovely creatures. Um, you always want to do that under the project leader's um, supervision. They'll have the appropriate permits and let you know what you can and can't do. Um, a local example I've, I've seen in the paper and in their newsletter that Chippewa Nature Center here in Midland, Michigan, um, is doing a turtle monitoring program um, and you can um, help them find the species on um, their uh, nature center lands. You could also uh, volunteer for river cleanups and other public land stewardship days to um, help remove trash. Um, remember that you want to leave dead trees and branches as good basking habitat for the turtles. Um, also remove invasive species and help encourage native vegetation that will support um, these species over time. You can also support and implement stormwater management, best management practices. Um, so things like bioswales, rain gardens, rain barrels, pervious pavement, Anything you can do to increase uh, water quality um, of the stormwater that is reaching our rivers and streams and wetlands and decrease soil erosion is great. Um, and remember not to dump waste into um, storm or, or general sewer systems. You can educate others and um, tell them why turtles are important and why they need our help and how they can help. You can check your window wells and uh, take uh, measures to help um, keep those wells from becoming inadvertent traps for um, turtles among other species. So I went into detail about that in Mondays with Martha number 48. You can also survey or scan visually um, your yard before you mow or use other equipment. Um, so you want to you know, look through all areas where you'll be driving any sort of equipment. You can also, if it's possible, raise up your mower blades at least eight inches above the ground um, to help minimize the potential for blade impacts um, on turtles. However, wheels can still crush them so doing a careful job with that um, is great. It's even better if you are able to not mow um, in their suitable habitat. So if you have areas you're haying or um, just an area you want to do invasive species management, if you can hold off and not do those vegetation management activities um, when turtles are active, April through the months of October, um, that can be um, a pretty sure way to avoid adverse impacts um, with heavy equipment. Um, even something like a four-wheeler can, can crush a turtle. So um, keep that in mind as you're doing your yard work and other activities. You can conduct ecological restoration projects on your own landscapes to help reconnect um, upland nesting areas with wetland habitats or stream banks or river banks where the turtles overwinter. Um, you can remove invasive species and help native plants to thrive to provide food resources for them. And it's important that you, you know, not try to plant every square foot on your property. If you're leaving some bare dirt um, with loose soils for nesting habitat, that can really help in um, full sun to lightly dappled shaded areas um, or you can even create habitats with piles of sand um, and loose soil or gravel. Um, if you are working on a construction project um, during a time when turtles are active and have habitat nearby using a three-foot silt fence to help keep them out um, is, is great you want to make sure that that silt fence is uh, buried 12 inches into the ground so they can't dig under. And you kind of want to make it a J shape and route them away from your work area um, and towards other safe passage areas where 
um, work with heavy equipment is not being done. Um, alternatively, if you have to work in a wetland habitat, you can use timber mats um, to move, you know, scan as you lay them down. And once they're down, then turtles are more visible when they're on top of that surface. So it makes driving heavy equipment in wetlands um, a little bit safer for um, turtles. And um, lastly, it's important to keep your equipment um, and your footwear clean. Uh, make sure you do remove any um, soil, organic matter, um, and disinfect with a mild bleach solution um, in between sites to help um, prevent the spread of invasives and disease. I hope those ideas um, inspire you to get out there and help our native turtles. Thanks and have a good week.